Hi YouTube, Neil here with Faces the Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. Apologies this week, we've had a few technical issues with our microphone, we've had to send it back and get a new one. So in this video, we haven't really got a microphone, so please bear with us, but for the next video, we will definitely have one. In this week's video, we're gonna be showing you how to reupholster an old wooden chair from this. Into this. This is a fairly easy upholstery project for beginners, so I'm going to show you how we take the old fabric off because this is quite an old chair. It's all done with individual tacks. So the guy who originally upholstered it sat there with tacks and done each staple. So you can imagine how old it is. So I'm going to strip all that out, put new webs on the seat, new foam. It's quite an easy project, to be fair. You could probably do this if you're a beginner. The double piping might be a little bit more intricate, but you don't have to put the double piping on. I just put it on for a nice finish. So if you like these kinds of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so every time a new video comes up, you can watch it. If you like the content or the video, please don't forget to leave us a like or a comment underneath. We love hearing from you guys. So without further ado, this is how to reupholster an old wooden chair. Action! So we start by taking the bottom off, and as you can see it's a hessian lining. And what I'm using here is my pincers to take all the old tacks off and the old fabric. And as always guys, any of the tools we use in this video will be linked in the description below. So what we're doing here is we're taking out all the old fabric. So there is felt, hessian. We're gonna to have to strip it back to the bones because it's all perished. As it's so old and everything is just disintegrating in my hands. So here I'm using my staple lifter to remove the old tacks from the frame. So now I've checked the frame and it's a bit wobbly, so I'm re-gluing some of the joints, putting some decent wood glue in there, quite a lot, and then I'm gonna clamp the whole thing together, and leave it to dry for a day. Here it is outside drying in the sun with all the clamps on. So what we're doing now is we're putting on some webbing, stapling one side, going around to the other side, pulling it nice and tight and then stapling down using our Stanley knife to cut it off. We're leaving a gap in between each one, no more than two inches I'd say. Each bit of furniture differs. I'll leave a link in the description below for some elastic upholstery webbing. So now, we're going in between, we're going across. Instead of front to back, we're going across and we're going up and over, up and over. And the same concept applies. Staple one side, go to the other side, pull it nice and tight, and then cut off with a Stanley knife. And then on the next web, you wanna go the opposite. So if you've gone under and over, you wanna go over and under on the next one. Now the webbing's done, we're gonna put a layer of Hessian over the top to protect the webs and the foam. So I'm turning it under, tacking it off. Always try and turn it under. Or if you're gonna staple it, staple it raw and then turn it over on itself again. It makes it ultra strong. And the staples won't just rip through the hessian then. So what I'm doing now is I'm gluing down a square piece of inch thick foam. That will give you a nice dome on the top once you're finished. And then I'm going in with a two inch blue, which is a good grade for seating. It's nice and firm. It's also soft when you sit down on it. Pushing it down, then I'm cutting into the foam so that the foam moves around the legs and the frame. Then I'm gonna use my electric foam cutter to cut off the excess foam on each side. So now that's on, we're going to put a half inch blue topper on top of that, which rolls over the sides, which is going to give a nice rounded finish on the front sides and back. So again, you want to cut this around your frame, 
making the cuts into the foam so it sits nicely. Then glue down the sides and then cut off your excess. Just watch what I do here. Do apologise, I'm not wearing my facelift t-shirts in this video because they're too thick and it was incredibly hot. Now we're adding a layer of Dacron. Finally, this is the final layer to give you a nice luxurious finish. And it's much easier to work with once Dacron's on it as well. So glue your Dacron down using upholstery adhesive. Make your cuts into your wood. And then cut off your excess. So I'm going to measure the fabric, cut it, and then start upholstering it. So you see I've got a soft tape measure here. So I'm coming around to the back, make sure I've got enough at the bottom. 31 front to back, and 35 side to side. 31 front to back. I'm just going to mark that now. I've already checked that this is, this is square. So 31. 35 side to side. But I want to make sure that one of these lines is in the middle. So 35 is got come over here 35 there so you've got a stripe so you can follow the stripe I'm just gonna put a nip there on the front and a nip here right so what I'm gonna do with this chair is I'm gonna mark on the frame halfway which is there and on the back I'm going to do the same. So I'm just laying this all out nice and flat, making sure that the lines are all straight, making sure I've got a nut at the back here to staple off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my first staple Now, I'm going to put another staple in the back here. What I'm doing is just putting a few temporaries in. Likewise on the sides. Putting some temporaries in so I know that everything is on. Keeping an eye on my lines, making sure they're straight. So I'm making cuts now into where the wood for the arm. nice cut there see how the fabrics all falling round also we're gonna be finishing this with a chair like this you can normally put braiding something like that we're gonna we're gonna do a double piping on it so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna do the back and the front again what I've done is staple my middle down and I'm working my way outwards so what I'm doing here guys is I've obviously made these cuts and obviously the fabric is meant to be sort of here, so there's a lot of extra fabric here. So what I'm doing is having to cut a fair old bit of it away. So I've got all that excess fabric I don't need, so I'm going to cut that away. And what I can do is fold it back. So you remember in the beginning how we put that bit of foam in the bottom to give it a nice dome? So if you look at that now front on, 
Yeah, it's all there. You've got a nice dome on the top, it's not dead flat. You need that sort of dominess. Could have gone even a bit more, but it looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna cut all that off and then I'm gonna run a double piping around. We're taking a trip. So on this chair, we're gonna put a double piping cord. So we need to cut some piping cord. So I'm just gonna mark these out. So I'm just basically going double what I would normally go for a piping cord. Just one more thing guys, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take my double piping and make sure that as it goes on, I'm gonna be able to keep the stripes lined up at the front and the back. So I'm just gonna join these two up. So here I'm sewing double piping, using a double piping foot. I'm not gonna to get too technical with this video because it is an upholstery for beginners video. So if you would like to see a detailed video on how to do double piping, leave us a comment below and we will try and get that sorted shortly for you. So I've already attached the double piping, now I'm putting the bottom on. We've already done a video before on how to do bottoms, so we will leave that in the link above. And here we are, the finished product. Isn't she pretty? This is the before. Very sorry for herself. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.